the homework you would like me to go over, please? 4C? I was, I was wondering about number 4. 4 is pretty cool. So here's what we have. We have a mass, and this mass is hanging but it's also being repelled, I guess, by this charge. So if this is a positive charge, I'm pretty sure this is a positive charge <laughs> as well. Otherwise, it would be hanging straight down, but it's pushed it away. So we should be able to come up with some kind of a set of equations, although because I'm seeing angles in 4C, I think this is going to be like a triangle, equilibrium, tip to tail kind of a thing. I would say this. Jeez, sorry. My mouse has updated the driver, and I need to slow it down. What are the forces acting? Get the obvious ones. What else? Tension. What else? Electric force, and it's getting pushed to the left. So, as a diagram, it's going to look like this. I always draw the easiest one first, mg. I draw the toughest one next, tension, but I know the electric force is dead horizontal because they placed these on the same level with that dotted line there. Okay. They gave me the mass, so I think if they're talking about the charge Q, I'm going to use this equation. Oh, and Sally, I'm positive that that's 25 degrees when I do my Z rule thing and add extra lines and whatnot. You okay with all that? So we're going to get tangent equals electric force divided by mg. Is that okay? We're going to get tan 25 equals Fe over mg. I'm going to get the Fe by itself. How would I do that? I'm going to move the mg over. And I'm going to write over here because I'm running out of room. mg tan 25. But now, Sally, I'm going to write the equation for electric force equals k q1 q2 over r squared. Let's see. Do I know the mass? 5 milligrams. Milli is 10 to the negative 3, I think, if I recall. 0 0.005 grams. G, I know. Tan, I know. K, 9 times 10 to the 9th. That one's going to be showing up a lot, this unit. You'll end up memorizing it because it's a nice one. Uh, charge 1 is 5 microcoulombs. Mystery charge 2, I don't know. I, oh, radius, I need to get this distance here. Oh, they gave me a 15, that's 25. I should be able to figure out what the heck the radius is, I think, also using trig. Uh, opposite hypotenuse sine 25 equals the radius over 15. I think the radius is 15 times the sine of 25. So let's put everything together here. I have this. M. You know what? Before I rewrite it, do you mind, Sally? I'm going to get the second charge, the mystery charge, by itself. I'll do it algebraically first. So we're going to go move the R squared up there and divide by KQ1. I think charge 2 is going to be M g r squared tan 25 all divided by bonk, k q1 is that okay now i like this question in that i love the idea of having something in equilibrium well this is you know what this is? This is the magic wand toy I showed you guys last day, except instead of having the charge straight up hovering 
against gravity. We've got the charged object, a heavier object, Megan, on a rope getting pushed sideways. So with the magic wand, I was able to keep it straight up. But if you had a heavier object on a rope, I would probably be able to push something a little bit sideways at an angle. I kind of like that. I think it's a little overkill not to give you the radius. Although, you know, as a nasty multiple choice one, I guess I'd be okay. As a written, I'd almost certainly give you the radius. Have we tried crunching the numbers and does it work? I'm running out of room, so I'm going to have to try and go straight to my calculator. I kind of find this one a little bit complicated, but that's okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the radius, which is... Oh, make sure I'm in degrees, Mr. Duick. Are you in degrees, by the way? Okay. It's 15 sine 25. So there's the radius, 6.339, 6.34. All right. Oh, but that's centimeters, right? So my radius is not six point. It's six point three four centimeters, which is point zero six three four meters. That's going to make a difference too, isn't it? Let's see if this works. M point zero zero five. There's five milligrams times 9.8 times 0 0.0634 squared tan 25 close bracket divided by bracket 9 times 10 to the 9th times what was the charge 5 micrograms 5 micro sorry not micrograms micro coulombs 2 times 10 to the negative 9? Uh, I, I bet you pico is 10 to the negative 9, how much you want to bet. That's a guess, but that... See, I got a 2, so I'm pretty sure we're right. Okay? So would I consider this fair game? I think with the radius and with... Uh, like, I wouldn't give you everything in milli, and my, I'd give you better units. Fair enough? Any others? Okay, so lesson one, as far as I'm concerned, later on today you can hand in, but before you all get up, let's go find lesson two, because lesson two was electric field. That was last day. Questions from lesson two. Now is your chance to ask. And the homework, Ryan, was 136, 13, and 17. 136, 13, and 17. What did we say last day about electric field? Jordan, we said that electric field, it's sort of like an invisible octopus set of tentacles radiating out in all directions. Similarly to gravitational field, electric field, when you have any charge anywhere, it's sending out an electric field. The problem is because charges come in two types, positive and negative, electric field is going to have direction. What is the direction of the electric field? Does anybody remember how we decided the direction of the electric field? We asked, which way will a positive want to move if it could? Now, that's not on your sheet. You'll have to memorize that, and you better believe I'll have a bunch of direction questions to ask you on your test. We also said, Dylan, it's tough for us to visualize electric field. I showed you a few um, apps that I downloaded that kind of helped, but we use... Uh, electric field diagrams like this where we said the lines the arrows tell you the direction of the electric field the number of lines tells you how charges compare to each other if they both have the same number of lines it's the same magnitude of charge and how far apart the lines are is the relative strength of the electric field if your lines are far apart electric field right here is pretty weak if your lines are close together electric field right there pretty strong and I did a couple of uh, where are we? I think I had a couple of computer drawings, if I can slow down enough. Here we go. Yeah, there's some of the computer sample drawings that I found. So, questions from that homework? Any electric field questions? Going once, going twice. Okay. A little worried, but... We'll move on. So what happened to lesson three, you may be asking. We're suddenly on lesson four. 
I actually last year retyped lessons one, two, and three, and I got them done in lessons one and two because we're a little bit behind schedule. I'm trying to catch up, so I got to compress some lessons. So lesson three was actually electric field. Lesson two was actually electric force. Lesson one was actually charge concepts like positives and negatives, but you do some of that now in science, I think 10 or whatever, or science 9. So I skipped some of it. Sorry. Electric potential energy. What's gravitational potential? Well, first of all, what was energy? Energy was the ability to do work. It was the ability to exert a force over a distance. Gravitational potential energy, basically if you removed an object from the Earth, it wanted to fall back down. And as long as you were close to the Earth here, you could just use MGH, but we said on the cosmic scale, G changed as you moved way out into space, but we still said things want to fall back down. Well, we're going to talk about electric potential energy as well. Let's suppose that Tyler is a big positive charge and I'm a negative charge. Which way do I want to move if I could then? Towards Tyler. So let's suppose there's a little invisible angel and it's moving me further and further away from Tyler. What it's having to do, it's doing work because I don't want to move this way. The further it moves me, the more work it has to do because I want to fall down to Tyler. But the work gets easier because the further I go away, the weaker Tyler's electric field becomes, so I can't feel it quite as strong. That's what we're talking about, though. Electric potential energy. Oh, uh, except small problem. What if Tyler is a positive charge and I'm a positive charge? Which way do I want to move? Okay, so if I'm doing work, it would take work to move me closer to you. And that's where my gravity analogy breaks down because in gravity, things don't want to fall up. They always want to fall down. Well, here, depending on the polarity of your charges, maybe you actually want to fall up. We're going to define electric potential energy in a manner similar to orbital gravity potential energy. We say that electric potential energy reflects the work that must be done to move a charge Q from a point near charge Q out to infinity. You may recall that when we did gravity, I did a graph like this, where this was R, and we said the work was the area underneath a graph. We're talking about something similar here, but not for gravity, for electric force. So let's suppose that this is a positive charge and this is a negative charge. Which way does it want to fall? Which way does it want to move? The little tiny charge wants to move to the left. So if I want to move it out a very, very long way, how far away? Well, infinity, but we'll just say a very, very long way. It doesn't want to move to the right. I would have to do work. I would have to add energy in order to get it to move to the right. Recall that the force between two charges is not constant, so I can't just go force times distance. It can't be used. We can't use that. We have to find the area under a force versus distance graph using calculus. I'm just going to say, trust me on the calculus. Here is the equation for electric potential energy. And if you haven't already, you might want your formula sheet out in front of you because you're going to want a lot of the charges and constants and things like that. Electric potential energy is K Q1 Q2 over R. Doesn't that look sort of like what we did for gravity? In gravity, the difference between force and energy was force had R squared, energy had R. Oh, and gravity, we put a negative in front. In electric force, the difference between energy and force is force has R squared and energy has R. Now, we don't put a negative in front here. And the reason is because there's two types of charge, sometimes you will end up with a positive amount of energy out there. It depends whether you're dealing with like or unlike charges. So we don't simply say, oh, 
Zero is out at infinity always, therefore everything closer is negative. But doesn't that look an awful lot like what we did with gravity in terms of the equation? Okay? You want to find out how much potential energy a charge has at any one location? That. You need to know the big planet. You need to know the tiny satellite charge. How far away you are. Oh, and then 9 times 10 to the 9th is just like G6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. It's the constant that makes the units work. By this relationship, who's in calculus? Who was in calculus? Who knows what limits are? The limit as R approaches infinity, this will work out to zero. By this relationship, out at infinity, you have no potential energy. Now, by this relationship, unlike charges, if one is positive and one is negative, unlike charges have a negative potential energy. Does that make sense? Yes, because they have negative potential energy, they want to be attracted to each other. To get them to zero, you would have to add energy. If you want to add to a number and get to zero, you better be starting at negative. Under this equation, like charges have positive potential energy. They want to move away from each other to infinity. In fact, because they have positive energy, you have to add energy to move them in closer to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. For forces and fields, you don't put in negative and positive signs. Write that down. This is important. Forces and fields, we don't put in negative and positive signs. These are both vectors. <coughs> For potential energy, we put in negative and positive signs. Energy is a Scalar. One of the things kids get confused with or have trouble remembering is when am I allowed to put pluses and minuses in, Mr. Duick, and when don't I? Forces and fields, no signs. Scalars, signs. I'll let you come up with your own little acronym, but I just remember scalars, signs. I haven't found a forces and fields. I haven't found a phrase that begins with an F for no signs. If you come up with something, let me know and I'll add it to my little memory trick. But forces and fields, signs. On your formula sheet, sorry, forces and fields, no signs. On your formula sheet, see the top row? Don't put positives and negatives in those. But you can't write that on your formula sheet, sorry. The rest of them I think are all scalars, but I'll double check that. Example one, find the potential energy of a negative 75 microcoulomb charge that is 3 centimeters from a positive 120 microcoulomb charge. Okay. Potential energy is K, Q1, Q2, over R. By the way, you want to make sure you know where that equation is on your formula sheet. I think it's the first one on the second row, yes? Third row? What's on the second row? I can't hear you. Oh, voltage, okay. So first one on the third row. 
it's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. The big charge is 120 microcoulombs, 120 times 10 to the negative 6. The little charge is negative 75 times 10 to the negative 6. So, Gordon, here we put in the positive and negative for energy. We don't for forces and fields. Why? We decided the direction by using like charges repel, unlike charges attract, or we decided the directions for electric field by saying which way would a positive want to move it could. All over point zero three. Right now, how much potential energy does this charge have? You get that? So it has negative 2,700 joules of energy. Now, what does the negative mean? It means that to get it out to infinity, you'd have to add energy. Because out at infinity, how much energy does it have? Zero. So you'd have to add 2,700 joules. You'd have to do 2,700 joules of work. So B says... Write a work energy equation if the negative 75 microcoulomb is moved out to infinity. Okay. B. Work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic. Oh, it, what does it say to assume? Starts and ends at rest, so... What's change in anything? Potential energy final minus potential energy initial. <coughs> Out at infinity, what's your final energy? It's not meant to be a trick question. Out at infinity, what's your final energy? Sorry, I can't hear. Zero. Minus, what was our initial energy? Negative 2,700. How much work would it take to move it out to infinity? Zero minus minus 2,700. Or what I'm really saying is you'd have to add 2,700 joules of energy. So the work done by the applied force what would the applied force be? I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, a battery, an external source of voltage is moving this charge far away because it wants to fall to the left and we're moving it out to the right. Maybe invisible angels or maybe it's just a hypothetical math question. But you'll notice again, Justin, for energy, for a scalar, I put the signs in. Next page. Okay. By this relationship, like charges have a positive potential energy. And this makes sense because it takes works to overcome the electrical repulsion and push the charges together. Example two. It says, find the work required for an external agent, angels, battery, some kind of electric circuit, whatever, to place a positive 2.5 milli, that's 10 to the negative 3, a positive 2.5 milli coulomb charge five meters away from a positive 1.75 milli coulomb charge. Note, m equals milli equals 0 0.001. Assume we start out an infinite distance away. So, is this charge here negative or positive? Positive. Megan, is this charge here negative or positive? 
Does it want to move to the left? So we're going to have to do work to force it to get closer to this positive charge. Here's our fixed charge. You can imagine it's thumbtacked to the ground or invisible angels are holding it. And then invisible angels are pushing it closer and closer and closer and closer. And the further they push it, the tougher it's getting because the closer it gets, the stronger the electric field, the stronger the force of repulsion. How much work? Once again, Gord, we're going to assume we start and end at rest. Once again, we're going to ask, what's change in anything? What is change in anything? So this is going to be potential energy final minus potential energy initial. Work is going to be K, Q1, Q2, all over R final <coughs> minus where are we starting according to this question infinity what is our initial potential energy if we're starting at infinity zero I'm going to get 9 times 10 to the 9th. Big fixed charge is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 3. The moving charge is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. And we end up how far away? 5 meters away from each other. How much work will it take to move that char from a, that charge from a long distance away into within five meters? <coughs> seven eight seven five. Uh, two or three sig figs. Seven, seven, nine hundred joules. Again, Justin, we got a positive answer because we would have to do work. In fact, if you asked, what if you started out here and then moved out to infinity, and if you asked, how much work would you have to do, you'd get a negative answer because your initial would be this your final would be zero and what that would be telling you is it wants to fall up and here's where again where my gravity analogy breaks down so for energy a scalar we will include the plus or minus in the equation unlike forces and fields both of which are vectors where we decided the direction ahead of time by looking at the charges polarity Now, if there is no external agent pushing the charges around, if the charges are moving in the way that they want to, then the energy of the system will be conserved. <laughs> Example three. So we have an electron here. It starts at rest. Here's a proton. Which way does this electron want to move if it could? To the left or to the right? To the left. Like, unlike charges, attract. Here's my question. As it's moving, it's speeding up. Find its speed when it's that far from the proton. Okay? Is this question talking about speed? Everybody say yes. Is there a change in... I'm going to say a change in height. Think like gravity. Is it falling? This is actually a conservation of energy question. We're going to start out by going kinetic energy initial 
and potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Are any of these zero? Yep. Now the other one that they'll sometimes do, Ryan, is they'll start out, in, right now where you are this far away from the proton, but sometimes they'll start you out at infinity. What they're then saying is your initial potential is also zero, and they're saying you let it go, it's going to fall in. How, how fast will it be traveling once it falls all the way to the ground, all the way to the proton? So we're going to have this then. Potential energy initial minus potential energy final equals kinetic energy final. And you know what? I'm going to need more room. I'm going to move that up here. Potential energy. Now, this is electric potential energy, not MGH. This is electric potential energy. That's going to be K Q1 Q2 over uh, initial R initial minus K Q1 Q2 all over R final. And apparently that's going to equal 0.5 mv final squared. <coughs> what do they want us to find? V final. Let's see. Do I know K? Yeah. Do I know Q1? Yep. Do I know Q2? Yep. Do I know my initial radius? Yep. Do I know? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, do I know the mass of what's moving? It's an electron. Yes, Kieran, it's on your formula sheet. What is the mass of an electron? It's small. Okay, so they're going to often give you questions involving electrons and protons. If you need the mass, it's on your sheet. I'm going to crunch the whole left-hand side first. Let's do this. This is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. Proton, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, right? Fundamental elementary charge. Electron, negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. All over. Jordan, I've scrolled down. What was my initial distance here? Minus 9 times 10 to the 9th. Proton, positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Electron, negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. All over 1 times 10 to the negative 11. <clears throat> I didn't leave you guys enough room, I'm noticing. I apologize. You'll have to kind of write small. I'm going to move on to the top of the next page. Sorry. I'm going to crunch. The, oh, and that equals 0.5 mv squared. I'm going to do the whole left side. Then I'll divide by 0.5. Then Dylan, I'll divide by m. And then square root to get the v by itself. Is that okay? So here we go. 9e9 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 divided by 2.5 to the negative 11. So I get negative 9.216 times 10 to the negative 18 minus... I notice, Justin, this second expression here 
It's identical to the first one. I just got to change the radius. So I'm going to go second function, enter. And I'm going to put a 1.0 there because that's the new radius. Negative 2.304 times 10 to negative 17. Negative 2.304 times 10 to the negative 17. That equals 0.5 mv squared. Negative 9.216 times 10 to the negative 18 minus negative 2.304 times 10 to the negative 17 equals. I get 1.3824. Change colors, Mr. Dewitt. 1.2. Eight three four was that right, Mr. Dewitt? One point three eight two four. Good gosh. Three eight two four times ten to the negative seventeen, and you'll notice I got a positive answer, which is good. That equals v squared if I divide by 0. 0.5. And here, what was the mass of an electron? Nine point one one. I remember that. To negative 31. And then don't forget to square root. Oh, I like this question. 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 Divided by 0. 0.5 times 9.1. One one negative thirty one square root of that, and I get v equals five point five times ten to the one two three four five six. Yes, yeah, fast, but not faster than light. Let me re-explain because I see a lot of glazed eyes. So because we had unlike charges, this wants to move there. And they told me that this was fixed. So this is like my planetary charge, Megan, it can't move. This is like dropping an object to the Earth, but dropping an object from outer space. It's going to pick up speed. The further it moves to the left, it's going to pick up more and more speed. It's going to gain kinetic energy. How is it gaining kinetic energy? It's losing potential energy. And then be very, very careful with your negatives and your positives and your calculator and your signs. <coughs> One more. In the diagram below, it says, find, first of all, the potential energy of the system. Then it says, find the force <laughs> magnitude and direction on the upper 1.5 microcoulomb charge. Then it says, find the electric field magnitude and direction. This is far harder than you're going to be asked. So I'm going to just talk about this without doing it. If I wanted to find the overall potential energy, I would find the energy between those two, K, Q1, Q2 over R. I would find the energy between those two, K, Q1, Q2 over R, and I would find the energy between those two. I'd have to do some Pythagoras to find what R was. And then because energy is a scalar, I don't care that they're set up in a triangular pattern or whatever. I just add them up. Energy doesn't care about the shape of the direction of the forces. To find the net force on this one here, this is pushing, uh, sorry, this is pulling it in, this is pushing it up. You would add them together tip to tail by using the force equation. To find the electric field right there, you would find the electric field, the electric field, the electric field, add all three together tip to tail. Too tough. I'm not going to worry about it. 
What's your homework? Number one. Number two. Number three. Four and five. So right now it's been one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Uh, six is good. Uh, seven is overkill. Eight is fine. And we're going to pause there. Now. What have I got here? For those of you who are working on the bonus video game, there is one solution that a student did a couple of years ago. <clears throat> I've seen someone did a lovely solution only using about 12 points now. Um, and it only took them a few tries. I thought that was quite clever. What we're looking at, sorry? Uh, I don't know, not yet. I haven't got an email from him, as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, apparently, you can Google your way through it. I chose to just do it without cheating. <laughs> so there. <coughs> um, we're talking about potential energy. And one of the areas that we store potential energy electrically is in chemical batteries. How many of you have a laptop computer? Okay. Watch this. This is actually pretty impressive. The following demonstration is extremely dangerous. Do not try this at home. <coughs> what you're about to see is a staged demonstration of a lithium-ion battery fire in a generic notebook computer. To start with, we externally force the battery into the runaway state, but the actual battery reaction, an ongoing chain reaction of each cell, is real. So how much potential energy is stored in one of these things? It's frighteningly impressive. The first battery cell has just bent it. The heat from this cell is going to start a chain reaction into the other cells in this multi-cell pack. As you can see by the small smoke trail, that first battery cell vented with such force that it blew a hole in the palm rest. If this were a real life situation, the best strategy would be to move away from the laptop quickly. In other words, don't try and put out the fire. What you saw there was the second cell in the pack erupt even more violently. The flames shot outside the field of vision of the camera, approximately six feet high. just saw the successive venting of the third and fourth cells. In this demonstration, the fire continues to burn hotter with each reaction, and each cell venting becomes more violent. 
so hot that it take the thermometer above its maximum range giving us an error code. Temperatures had to exceed 1,000 degrees. If this were a real situation, your natural tendency would be to try to put out the flight. You would be aware that this is a very dangerous situation. Not only is this an electrical fire, and a chemical and a metal fire as well. Throwing the wrong components on this fire will only fuel the fire and make it spread. You could use a class D fire extinguisher, but if you're uncertain, stand back and call the fire department. There's a battery pack from another portable just to the right of the flames. In an earlier failed attempt at this demonstration, we had struck a portable with blunt force, causing the battery to puncture, smoke, but not ignite. We took that battery out of the portable and set it just to the right of the notebook in this demonstration. The system used for this demonstration was not a production unit, it was made of generic parts. It did not contain what we call the battery. Moral of the story is, especially those of you that own laptops, if you hear about a recall of your battery, take it seriously. That's a fair bit of energy stored in that tiny little tube that gets attached to the back of your laptop. And if that goes, or if you drop it, and that battery is damaged, it is not worth hoping, oh, maybe I can continue using it. Buy a new battery. Okay? There is about 25 minutes left. This is your chance to get caught up and work on the homework.